The truth about achieving 100% consistency in stable diffusion is not exactly true. You can get 80 to 90% of the way there. And today I wanna to show you how to do that. So to get started, you always wanna start with a good model, something like realistic vision, photon, absolute reality. When it comes to people, these types of models are always a good start. In terms of consistent faces, the easiest way to do that is to actually give your character a name. In my example here, I have Lalisa Tisson, Katie Dobrev. Totally made up. And the reason why I use two is because individually when I use these names, they have certain characteristics that I want to put together. So you can use one name or two names. If you're not good at making up your own names, there are random name generators all across the net. I'll leave a few in the description below. You can also state nationality to keep ethnicity somewhat consistent. And secondly, you'll need control net. If you don't have it installed, I have an installation video. I'll also leave that in the link below. We'll also touch on Roop just a little bit. So the first thing you want to do is come up with a prompt and a look that you like. So I ran a few generations here just to develop some sort of style and look. And I wanted a really simple black sweater and jeans. Don't pay attention to the hands right now. This isn't the focus for this video. So from your batch of images, let's say you run 10 or 20, you should get at least two types of characters that look fairly similar. And then once you decide on a look that you like, you can import it into ControlNet. Now, when you're just experimenting in the beginning, I encourage you to start simple with something like this, black sweater, jeans, Try to be as specific on clothing as possible, but that's where the challenge is. Consistent clothing can be really hard to do. So let's open up ControlNet and we're gonna import the image we're gonna use. I encourage you to use a full body shot or at least from the knees up. Make sure you have it enabled. You can use Pixel Perfect if you like, but the one we're gonna use today is called Reference. There isn't a ControlNet model to download. You just simply have to select it. We're gonna set the control weight to one. You can experiment with that. Typically 0.7 to one seems to work pretty well for what I do. And the only thing I wanna point out is I'll leave this on balance so that we have this style fidelity option available. This is gonna help with the consistency. So I'm gonna leave it at 0.5 for now. And I want you to pay attention to the style of this image here. We've got a pretty plain black turtleneck sweater, simple jeans some blonde highlights and dark brown hair. And of course we want consistency in the face. Let's take a look at the generated images. So here's the reference photo that we used. Very similar, difference in color and lighting, but that's okay. In this image, we have a different pose. The hands could use some work, I know, but face is consistent and she's actually holding that turtleneck sweater. Here's another one in a different location, although we are missing a hand here. The jeans are staying consistent. The clothing I would say is acceptable. Here's a few more examples, slightly different pose from our original. So considering we haven't done any LoRa training, Dream Booth training, this is actually very simple to do and it gets you 80 to 90% of the way there. Now what you can do is change the background and the surroundings. The only thing I'm gonna change here is put pier at sunset, and I'm gonna use the same reference image. And now we have the same character at the pier at sunset. Same turtleneck sweater. Every now and then we'll get this type of sweater with this circular neck. And that's fine too, because we can grab that whole batch and use it for different scenes. We have the turtleneck sweater back here again with this circular type of neck. My point is with this reference control net, it does a lot of the work for you and you can easily change the background, the locations, the outfits with very little effort. Now it's not 100% perfect like in the hands here, for example, but again, there are ways around that. Now this is for AI generated images. Can we use this for real photos? Absolutely. So first let's get rid of this image and I'm gonna import a real photo. And this time I'm gonna use the extension root. Now I'm not gonna go through the installation process. I'll leave a link in the description below. You just have to follow along. However, I do have an installation video coming up very soon. It's very simple to do. You take your reference photo to use as a face. 
you click on enable and that's pretty much it. Now if you have multiple people in the image, you can separate it here with commas. You could put like one comma two, for example, but in this case, we don't need it. We just need to enable it. I'm going to leave the prompt the same, but now it's going to generate images that look just like April whom I've worked with many times in the past. And the beautiful thing about this is that if I have a shoot with somebody and I don't like the location, I can use this method to change the environment, the location, even the outfit. Now this time I notice it's putting earrings on the image, which, uh, which is fine. We could paint those out. But for the most part, if we switch between these two, the sweaters look pretty accurate. Probably should have chose a different color. We do see a variance of sweater here. The face, the hair, pretty consistent. The look, the jeans, like if we really look at the jeans here, see the buttons, the little small details. This one, there isn't a button. This one, there is, that's slightly different. So it's those little variances that are gonna happen. Now, when that happens, this is where you can increase the style fidelity slider. Typically, I find 0.75, even all the way up to one, can help further with that consistency, but sometimes it's not needed. So for now, I would say to just start with this, create a whole bunch of images, naming your character, and then what you can do with the reference control net trait is utilize those images and those characters in different poses, different environments, and slowly piece together a story. As mentioned in a future video, we're gonna dive deeper on more the aesthetics like the hands and the faces and putting other characters in the same scene. Now, if you're wondering how to optimize automatic 1111 for SDXL, if you have an eight gigabyte graphics card or less, make sure to check out this video as I go over that in that video. Until the next one, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.